Well, hello, hello, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. This is our Brother Wes. This is Brother Wes coming back to you with another word of encouragement uh, this day, this day, this Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday is raining here in Atlanta. I want to greet you in the name of the Lord, and I want to say, I want to welcome my first-time listeners. If you're here, when you come on, I want to welcome you. Welcome you, welcome you with open arms. Uh, freely give, freely receive. Um, I'm, I'm someone who loves God and someone who's uh, open. <laughs> someone who expresses himself uh, uh, from my heart according to the word. I, um, you know, I'm 53, I'll be 54, actually 54 in uh, March 6th in a few days. And I accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior at 13, receiving the dwelling of the Holy Spirit at 13. And so been doing this a while, been studying, been seeking God a while. And so I have a relationship with him. And so what I do uh, when I'm talking and I come on pretty much every day, I'm talking from my relationship. When I'm coming on, when I'm talking, I'm talking from the relationship that, that thou formed uh, with the master, with the Lord. The scripture says, the scripture says that, uh, let me turn this down a little bit. The scripture says that when you pray, when you pray, close the door. When you play, close the door. When you play, go, no, when you pray, go and find your closet. Find your closet, your secret closet. And when you find that closet, close the door. And when you close the door, shut the door. Close the door on everything. Close the door on everything. And the scripture said, what you do in secret. I, God said, I'm going to reward you openly for it. And so uh, what I'm basically doing is my secret time, my secret relationship, my secret conversation, my secret love. What I'm doing, I'm taking my, my closet my closet experience, my closet confidence, my closet relationship with God in that secret place. And what I'm doing, I'm bringing my closet out in the open. I'm bringing my closet out, my closet relationship with God out in the open where everyone can see and be impacted by my, my closet, my, my closet relationship, my closet impact with God. And that's in the secret place. And so, and so that's why I come out every day. Uh, it's in my heart. Uh, it's a lifestyle to know God, to talk about God, to worship God, to, to magnify, bless God. It's a relationship to me. because It's a lifestyle. I, I was raised this way. My, I, you know, my oldest brother, he was telling me, and I was, I was saying, Mo, it seems like in this era and time we're living in, it seems like just so many people just don't know the word. I mean, just the simplest stuff, they just don't know. And you know what he told me? Uh, and one of my nicknames is BB. That's baby bum, the youngest of seven. He said, baby, you just have to think about it. We were raised to know God. It was a lifestyle. It's been a lifestyle. So it becomes second nature to us. And so it's now our job to give back. And so this way, I'm coming. I'm coming to give back. I'm coming to bless. I'm coming to help. To whatever I have, I'm coming to give it back. See, because salvation is not, not a, 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 a single thing. It's, it didn't corner the market. Salvation is actually, it's for everybody. It's for family, God's family. Remember Noah? Noah was talking to him and Noah was letting him know, oh, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. That's coming to rain, but they didn't listen to him. They didn't listen to him. They bald head, talked about him, laughed at him. They did all that laughing. That laugh turned into a cry when it began to rain. They were laughing when he was talking. When it was building the dark, they were laughing. But when the rain dropped and began to fall, that laugh and that mockery turned into a cry. Same thing happened this day and time. People, they joking and kidding, you know, and, and all this and God ain't coming and ain't no God and we're going to do what I want to do. And it's just like in the days of Noah, they, they ain't, people ain't really taking it serious. You know, no matter what happened, they just, they still do what they want to do. But you know, scripture did say that in the last day, God is going to send a, uh, God's going to send a strong delusion. There's going to be a famine in the land. Not a natural bread and water, but a hand of the word. And so there's a famine, there's a famine. There's something that's prevalent here that's causing people to become blind. Become blind. But you know what? God want to open your eyes up today. He wants to open up your eyes up today and the word that God has given me. One, there's two things. That's interesting. Uh, I had some money yesterday, but for some reason I lost it. Looked everywhere for it, and before I came on to this message, I found it. 
And what I did, I had to retrace my steps. And in me retracing my steps, I found exactly what it was, it was one of my pockets. Uh, yeah, and so that's a good thing. And so I remain calm and I just re, re, uh, recheck, rethought, and found it. And so that's a good thing. Uh, so, But I do have a word that I do want to give you. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. Then I'm going to give you this word that, um, that God put in my heart. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. God bless you, magnify you. God, for this is the day that you made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. God, for everyone that's assembled today, everyone that, that, that come listening to have a need, they need healing, they need direction, they need an answer. God, whatever they need, they have expectation. God, those that are coming, that they have expectation. God, meet their expectation from, from the sound of this word. God, grant them, grant them God, grant them their petition. God, some been crying and some been crying over and over and wonder when the change is going to come because every time they cry, the, the situation don't move. But God, grant them, God, grant them their answer. They've been waiting a long time. God, calls it to come to pass because, God, we know, according to your word, the vision is for an appointed time. But in the end, it's going to speak and not lie. Though it tell me wait on it. And so, God, we're waiting. God, many that listen to me, they're waiting. Some are waiting, some are waiting, they don't want to wait, but some are waiting a little discouraged. Some are waiting and their heart done got sick and they don't, they've been discouraged and worried and weary. That's the word, God. Many are weary. They're weary from the wait. They're weary. They're weary, God. They're weary. And, and what makes it even so more so weary when they look over and they see that others, that they feel and they perceive that don't love you, that don't know you like you do. But still, it seems like they're being blessed. It seems like good things are happening to them, God. God, but speak them, speak to their spirit. God, speak to their spirit the promise that you made. The promise that you made, even in Psalms 37, said, fret not yourself. Because of even the wicked doers, because the clock is ticking. Soon they're going to be cut off. And the treasures of the wicked are laid up for the just. So God, quicken your people. God, encourage them. And not let them look at their circumstances. Not let them look at their material things. But teach them how to look to you, open their eyes up through the eyes of faith. Because it's in that faith that pleases you. It's in that faith that, that draws you. So God, God, give them, give God that listen to me, that same kind of faith that was once delivered unto the saints upon this rock. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall not prevail in their lives, God. God, many, it seems like things are overtaking them. It seems like circumstances are overtaking them. God, but it will not prevail. It will not. It will not overtake. It will not prevail. God, because of the rock. God, because of you. God, you are standing in between the gap. God, you are standing between them and their situation. God, and God, you are not going to let nothing happen. And all we got to do is call on you, God. And in us calling on you, God, you said if you call, I will answer. And God, as they're calling, as they're calling, God, you're answering. God, speak, God, speak, God, speak like never before, God. God, even in this time, God, encourage their heart even through the words. Even as you're speaking, God, you're causing distractions to fall. God, you're causing weaknesses to fall. God, you're causing confusion to fall. God, you're calling to fall now. God, you're causing, God, you're causing discouragement to fall. God, you're causing depression to, to fall. God, God, you're causing uh, oppression, suppression to fall, God. And God, is because of your glory, God. God, I thank you, and I thank you, and I bless you, God. God, that you're renewing. God, that you're reviving. God, you're sending a new Pentecost. God, you're doing a new thing in your people. This moment, this hour, this day, this sucker. God calls it to happen. God calls it to happen now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, you said, God, you said, God, you said that any man be in Christ Jesus, God. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have come new. And so, God, these things are passing away in their life. God, as they're being submerged in your name. God, as they're being submerged in your glory. God, as they're being submerged in, in your knowledge, God. God, there's a transformation that's taking place, God. God, there's a cutting away that's taking place, God. God, there's a separation, God. You're separating the weak from the tech chat. God, you're separating what's weak. That's, that's, that's the wickedness, God. You're separating. God, you're removing the weeds, God. God, that life might come again, God. God, because this is an hour and a season of separation, God. 
And in that separation, God, you're separating things, God, that your, your people might be blessed. God, you're separating everything that God, your people might enjoy the land and the blessing that you promised for them. The reason why, God, you're removing certain people out of people's lives, God, that been in their lives for, for years, is because the scriptures say, if the thief be caught. And God, many people that have bad intentions that wouldn't design God to be attached to them. God, you're removing them because, God, they cannot go to the place, God, that you're calling them to. They cannot go in because of that, God, because that sweet and bitter water cannot flow from the same fountain, God. There's a fountain, God, that's falling from your presence. There's a fountain that's falling, God, that's coming out, that's coming forth, that's coming out, God, even in your word. God, you said even in a desert place, in a dry place, in a dry situation, God. And God, many are discouraged because they, they're dealing with dryness. They're dealing with dryness in, in their life, in their mind, in their relationship, in their bank account. But God, you made a promise. God, you said in that dry place, God, you're going to cause a river to spring up. In that dry place, it's going to spring up, God, into everlasting life. God caused it to spring up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God caused that river to spring up in their mind. God caused that river to spring up in their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, in their relationship. In the mighty name of Jesus, they walk and they talk. God reveal, God reveal revelation knowledge. God calls revelation. God calls newness. God calls a life. God calls an awakening to happen right now in the mighty name of Jesus in their mind. And God, we're going to pray. We're going to thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you've done as your man is falling, God. God, your man is falling from heaven. Your man is falling from your mind. Your man is falling from your glory. Your man is falling. And God, in your man of falling, God, that what is this, God? And God, whatever, whatever that, that those that are listening to me right now, whatever they need, God, grant it. God, give them that what is this. Become that, whatever they need, become it. They need healing, become it. They need joy, become it. They need restoration, become it. They need financial blessings, become it. Whatever you need, God, whatever they need, God, grant it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. Now, this is the message, this is the message. And this message is, is dear to my heart. It, it's the woman at the well, the woman at Jacob's well, the Sumerian woman. And see, she was a Sumerian woman, and she came up to the Jacob well, and then Jesus was sitting there. And she was doing her thing and bring some water out. And she said, give me some, give me something to drink first. Give me something to drink first. And the woman kind of chipped out because said, wait a minute, now, now you a Jew. And I'm a Samaritan. You know, y'all don't deal with us. And so Jesus began to talk to her and said that, give me that and see the water I have. The water that I'm going to give you, you're not going to never thirst again. And so basically what Jesus was letting her know that she was forgiven. But also what he was letting her know, what he was letting her know was that that day that she met her, that was her new beginning. Because Jesus had a gift for her, a gift from God. And this gift that he had, that he gave her, it could be given naturally. It can only be received spiritually. That's repentance. That's forgiveness. That's life. That's everlasting life. And the reason why I say that because this one particular woman, when Jesus went to her, she said, well, go tell your husband. And, and, and the woman said, I don't have no woman. I don't have no husband. And, and then, then, then Jesus said, and then, then you got somebody that you're living with too. And the woman said, you must be a prophet. And so basically, that particular how and the reason why this particular passage was touches me so much because there was a time that I've had a lot of situations in my past that that really troubled me and really bothered me. But I knew God had forgiven me. But I knew men and, and men and women were pointing the finger at me from religion, bad teaching. See, one of the things that God is doing to many of you that listen to me, God is delivering you from false doctrine, bad teaching, doctrine of devils. So what God did, what God did, and, and, and it touched my heart so, one night I went to sleep. One night I was going to sleep, but when I went to sleep, I woke up. And when I woke up, I woke up in his presence. And there was a conversation that he had with me, and he reminded me of this woman. The Samaritan woman. 
And see the thing about it, even even with the woman at the world uh, at, at the well, she had, you know, she had five husbands, and she had someone she was living with. And so the perception that she was a harlot, the perception that she was a harlot, she wasn't no good. And and see, men had perceived a certain thing, but Jesus never said that. Jesus pointed to the fact that she had five husbands, and she was stay, she was living with somebody. But Jesus never called her a harlot. But you know what he did. But you know what. In the scripture also, his disciples, no, the Pharisees, no, it was the Pharisees, they want to stone this woman. They want to stone this woman because she had a past. Matter of fact, they wanted to, you know, pick up some rocks and Jesus rolled on the ground and he did without sin, cast the first stone. He bent down and did all that while they was wanting to accuse her. And, and when Jesus, Jesus rode, on the, rode on the ground and when he got up, all of her accusers was gone. And so I want to say this right here. Many people have accused you of certain things and tried to labor you and, and tried, to, uh, tried to put you in hell. Tried to pin you and say you ain't no good because you made this mistake, because you did this, because you did that. And so, but what God is doing, God is delivering you from people. God is limiting you from false doctrine, false teachings, doctrines of devils. And what God is saying to you, well, you thought that there wasn't a place for you to be forgiven because this woman said, well, you know, Jews don't talk to Samaritans. We're not good enough. Why are you talking to me? But Jesus was letting her know that she was more than good enough because what I got for you is going to give you everlasting life. And so Jesus, he's saying the same thing right now. It does not matter what condition you've had or what condition that um, that's pressing you, that's riding you, that people always bring up, family members always bring up. You need to know that Jesus said you are forgiven. Matter of fact, he has a gift for you, and it's called a gift of life. And all you got to do is just say, God, forgive me, set me free. The scripture says that whosoever shall be called in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Matter of fact, in Romans it says that with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth of confession is made into salvation. And so this is your day. This is your day for healing. This is your new day. This is your new wind. This is your new wine. This is your new water. Are you hearing me and are you listening to me? The scripture says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You need to know that this is your head on collision, but you'll change. Just like Jesus went to that woman. She had a past, but he went to that woman in the new. He went to that woman that day. And from that day, he didn't remember that past no more. God forgave her of whatever she did. And you need to know you need to come to Jesus right now and talk to him. Talk to him right now. Whatever that, that thing that's riding, you say, God, I give it to you. I give, now give me that gift. Give me life. Give me something that I will never thirst again. And see what it is, men have been thirsty. You've been thirsty for pain. You've been thirsty for, you see what it is that there, there's a thirst in you. See, you've been trying to replace or replenish that thirst with natural things. Natural relationships. Natural episodes. But now you found out that you were never, you were never satisfied. Your satisfaction, your satisfaction is not in a bottle, it's not a relationship, it's not in none of those things. But your satisfaction will come and only come when it's in Jesus. That's your satisfaction. The scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And also the scripture says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, they shall be filled. This morning, this day, God want to fill you with change. Scripture says, uh, uh, remember not the former things. Don't remember, don't consider, the th nor the days of old. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing in you. Know that. God said, forget about your past and embrace this newness because God got some new for you. God's got something fresh for you. Is that all right? Good morning. God bless you.